All right, now I'm gonna get started showing you how to use a stone stencil to make a stone texture on your, on your paper crafts. This is a stencil that's available for free on my blog. Um, the only thing about it is that it really takes a long time to cut out. So I'm actually gonna make a smaller one that you can cut out much faster. I chose this size because it fits the current little house that I'm making. So I, I thought it'd be easier to have a, a big stencil, but it does take a long time to cut out with my Cricut. If you don't have a Cricut, there are lots of other options for stencils. Um, my favorite are these Tim Holtz stencils. And what I did was I, I bought two of these and I glued them together because I wanted it, again, to fit one of my little houses better. But this is a great stencil and he's got a lot of variations as well. Here's a kind of a slate variation and again I glued two together using um, E6000 glue. And here is another one of my stencils that I cut out. This one's kind of hard to see. I used the cutting mat protector from my Cricut to cut this one out. This actually doesn't take nearly as long because it's very thin material, but it's also much more fragile. So for this one, I actually used some uh, Yupo paper that I found at a craft store. All right, so next, after you've got your stencil, you need to pick your material to, to stencil with. And I like texture paste. My favorite is this grit paste. I don't think, I don't know if you can see that it's got a little bit of a gritty texture to it, but I really like that and I think it helps with the stone. And this is a regular opaque texture paste. It kind of looks like buttercream icing. And there are other pastes you can use. These are um, in the artist section at the hobby store, um, modeling paste. And sometimes you get some called light molding paste. It's the same kind of thing. And it's slightly thicker than the Tim Holtz texture paste. But the grit paste is my favorite. It just works so well for mimicking stone. The other thing you need is a palette knife or you can even use like a little plastic knife. I kind of like the serrations on the edge. I think that helps make a stone texture too. And then you need a primer. You can use either a dark primer or a light primer. Either one works. And then a, var a variety of colors to help make the stone, to bring the stone to life. I think that's the real secret. It's starting with a base color that's going to be the color of your mortar. And then paint over it and kind of gradually change the colors from light to dark or dark to light. And I'll show you how to do that. We'll paint them in just a minute. The back piece of my little house, it's going to be a house with a tower, and I'm going to tape it, actually I'm going to tape it down first, because I don't want it to move during the stenciling process, so I'm going to tape it down. The only part that's going to have a stone surface on this house is this kind of upside down T, so the rest of it I'm going to kind of cover up. I use a lot of painter's tape because I'd rather overuse the painter's tape than have to stencil and re-stencil or redo my stones. You want it to lay flat, so get that down. And I don't want to stay to stencil the part that's going to be uh, glued in the center. So I, these are actually supports on the side of my house. And so I want them to be plain so glue will adhere better. And I won't waste all my texture paste too. And let's get this a little better. Okay, 
that looks good this so now my piece is taped down well and next I'll actually tape down the stencil actually, I'm gonna turn it around this has a straighter edge so this will be the back and you want it to be nice and flat so that you get an even layer of texture paste if it if it kind of pops up it ends up making a um, kind of a fatter layer of stone and sometimes if you do that if you have a real fat layer of stone it kind of collapses when you take the stencil off as always I use a ton of tape which means I have to peel it up when I pick up the stencil I'm going to do a little bit more taping to hold the stencil down that looks good and again it's probably overkill but I, I want my little house to look good so now I'm going to get the paste. And like I said, you can either use a palette knife or you can use like a little plastic knife. You can use a fancy palette knife. This is just a little inexpensive plastic one. Just kind of smear it over. And you really want a thin layer. You, you think you want more. At first, you think you must need more texture paste than you really do need, but... You actually want the stencil to just kind of barely show through, like it's actually too thick there. Cover everything. And again, because we're mimicking stone, if stuff's a little rough, that's okay. I'll show you how the plastic knife works, too. And if you mess it up, the nice thing is you can just scrape it off and do it again. And we're a little tiny bit more down here. Okay, that looks good. Now, watch what happens. So you can add just a little texture with your knife. Or you can also kind of do like that. Kind of lift it up. So you really kind of you don't really have to follow rules. You can just sort of Just play around. I think that's the key, playing. You know, when you're making stuff like this, you're being creative, play is important. All right, I think that looks good. Wipe off the excess. You can actually put a piece of plastic wrap or, um, oh, I'm trying to think of a sticky one, Cling, uh, clinging seal on top so that it doesn't dry out. All righty, now it's time to lift up the stencil remove all my excess tape my exuberant taping job okay let's lift it up kind of lift it up gradually ah nice See how nice the stone is, even though it's a very thin layer. So I've got good space for my mortar, the space between the stones, and the stones look good. Now I'm going to let this dry. Let's paint the background color. I'm using a relatively dark paint. This is Tim Holtz Distress Paint called Hickory Smoke. And that's going to function as the mortar between the stones. The grit paste took about 30 minutes to dry. And be sure to paint the edges so when you fold them, they don't open up and show a raw cardboard color.
Now we'll let this dry so we can apply the layers of color that make the stone more realistic. Um, it'll probably have to dry for about 30 minutes or so as well. Okay, now we're ready to paint the stone. So I hope you can see the texture from the texture paste. And I use a brush, a pretty stiff brush with uh, a, a relatively small brush. I'm not great with brushes. This is just what I use. Uh, I mean, I'm not real picky about them. And then I've got a little bit of water so I can dilute my paint. And I'm just gonna kind of pick out a paint. So I'm gonna start with something called Gathered Twigs. It's a kind of a medium brown. And I'm just going to apply it kind of randomly. And I'm just trying to apply it to the raised part of the stone. And I just, I'm not necessarily going to do every stone. I just kind of pick out a few that are going to be brown. And as I use the brush, there's less and less paint on it, so it's a lighter and lighter color, and that gives me more variation. So I kind of like that. And I'm left-handed, so I usually paint from the right side first to the left. If you're right-handed, you'll do it another way. But what that does is it, it um, gives a little variation in color. Again, it's darker where I first apply it is on the right side. And when I get the color where I don't want it, I'll just get a little paper towel, try to remove some of the color from the, uh, the mortar. I want the mortar to stay this kind of gray background. But again, I'm not like real picky about it because it's supposed to be fun. This is, for me, this is play. If it's, a, if it's a pain for you, then you can use different techniques to do stone, like, I don't know, find a printout, of, a good printout of stone, and then apply it to your building. But I really like the texture that this allows. The other thing you could do are embossing folders. There are some great embossing folders, and my favorites are no surprise, Tim Holtz embossing folders. By I think Sizzix does them. And they are very impressive for mimicking stone. Okay, let's try another color. I'm going to do a lighter color. This one's called Weathered Wood. It has a slight blue tint to it. And... It'll make slightly lighter colored stones. And now you can see it's kind of mixing with the brown that was already on my brush. That's why I don't worry about, you know, cleaning it too much. Stone has so much color to it. So much variation. Each stone is different. So we can, we can try to emulate that by playing. And here's a darker brown. I'm going to dip it in a little water. So it's not quite so intense.
and that's how you do it. Will I play around with this some more? Probably. I'll probably make it a little darker, but you see how you get all the variation in this stone, and I just so love the effect it has on my paper crafts. So I hope you will try it. It takes some time. Sit down in front of the TV or while you're listening to something, some good music, and just kind of play and sort of bring your stone to life, so to speak. Okay, um, I hope you'll try this technique. And again, I'm Lucy on paperglitterglue.com. Y'all take care. Bye.